I'm Chris Thomas, the Chief Instructor of the Kyushu Jitsu Kenkyu Kai, and I want to welcome you to this Episode 7 of the Pressure Point Dojo here on Channel Fight. I told you in the last episode that we were going to look at kata. Kata is such a powerful tool for both your memory to rehearse technique when you don't have a partner, but also your imagination. As you practice kata and visualize real attacks and real responses, you develop powerful neural pathways that are easily used. But also the kata ultimately develops an incredible kind of flexibility as a martial artist. Um, it starts out like classical music, very precise, and it ends up like jazz, very responsive. Now, when we would teach and go out and show people bunkai and pressure points and, and uh, joint manipulation stuff, we found that there was a need for a common language that we could sort of all speak. So the kata nai hanchi, in particular in the hanchi shodan, this very simple uh, kata of Okinawan karate, became the common language that we could all use together. And so in this episode, we're going to look at that kata. You'll see the whole kata the way it can be performed, understand that there are multiple variations on this kata, and so uh, the version that you'll see me do is not intended to represent the correct one in the sense that that's the only way. In fact, because I practice both uh, Rukyu Kempo and Ishin Ru, I, I do two kind of different versions of the same kata, and, and that's, that's just for me. I mean, there, there's a lot of variety out there, but this kata becomes a kind of benchmark kata that we can use. That hanchi. So let's go into the master class and begin to learn this kata. And, and this punch comes in, I'm going to pass it here, lock it down this way, step in deep, and I have to pull. The emphasis is on pulling, and this hand strikes. So we grab. Oh, oh, Do you see him pull me off balance? Again, what happened? He pulled me off balance. Notice instead of hitting here, because where we were, I hit him, jump, I caught him with that instead. Same movement, same energy, but um, it was me dealing with the fact that when we made this initial motion here, when I stepped in this way, he pulled his arm here, and they actually pulled me offline. So I had to get myself back into line, got him with my elbow. I'm like, hey, man, I don't want to fight, and he comes this way and pushes my hand down so he can punch me in the face there. That's the most dangerous because that's the one where that thing is coming in fast, so you gotta get your butt out of the way. So we're gonna start by getting the butt out of the way. And the method, there's a, the, what I want you to do is you take your, uh, in your mind, uh, your index finger and you point it at the ceiling like this. And notice how my body moved this way. Now there's two ways to make this move. One way is to advance right here, see that? And the other way is what we call shiho, which is to advance left and twist. That's my preference. It's very, very fast. It's actually faster because it uses the adducting muscles, which are stronger and quicker. But it's, it, takes, it takes a little longer to learn, but the movement is here. Okay? And, and then you're just going to go, whoa, boom, this way. See that lock? And now I'm, I'm in a position where I can do this, so we call this, what, center lock or wrist turn press. But I'm also in a position where I can do this armbar. The grab, he, he's here. 
he's trying to hit me in the face. I go, the punch is coming. Whoa. See, oh, look, it does double duty. <laughs> now I start to do whatever joint technique. You now, in this particular case, armbar is not the best choice. It's better for me to do this one. I'd like to hit him. Oh, I can. But I want to hit him again. I could do this. Or I can grab onto something like his hair and pull him back to my hip this way. And then, and that's what I'm interested in, is this, this mechanic right here. Boom. I'm standing there, hey, dude, I don't want to fight. He suddenly decides he's going to punch me. I'm like, oh, crap. Notice how my shoulders are up, and I'm like all scared and freaked out. So the first thing I need to do is drop those shoulders. Oh, drop those shoulders. Whew. Bam. I get to hit him once. I get to hit him again. This is a, a punch, comes this way. I'm going to grind across it here, come back here, strike here. All right, so it's, whoa. <clears throat> I've been grabbed, and oh, let's grab two hands. And it's like, oh great, I've been grabbed. If I strike large intestine 10, it's right here, I can collapse him inward. Problem is, we would say in Tai Chi, he's double weighted. If I hit one side harder than the other, I get a much bigger reaction. Or I can, or I can actually shift targets, say hitting, um, I can use large intestine 7 here, large intestine 10 here, this way. Or I can start to manipulate into the lung meridian up here and go like this. See where his head's going each time? Okay. Now, if I put him down with that kind of heavy energy, I want you to see what, so this, I'm just punching up, right? But I want you to see what happens. Yeah, you can see his, his head just goes, stomach five is right here. That's stomach five. And it was just waiting for me. And you'll notice what was really interesting is that um, if you know how that works, you know that I'm, if I'm hitting on this side of his face, with my right hand I should use a palm, with my left hand I should use a fist, and there it was, the fist fit right in there, and it was, I was actually hitting with this part of the knuckle, and I just tapped him. Now, if all I do is put a tiny bit of body movement, okay, just a little body movement, okay, <laughs> right? So you could see I barely moved my hand, but my body turned. And that's what caused the energy, once I make contact, to keep going. And this is a thing that we'll come back to again and again, which is when we talk about pressure point work, we talk about one of the key elements is duration. How long do you maintain contact? How deeply do you penetrate? So we have penetration, duration, and then what would be sort of how hard do you hit power? Those, those elements are key elements that we do a lot. And when you get the feel right, your technique will get much better. I will show you an, a variation on this because in some systems, that technique is not an upstrike, but a downstrike. And in Shotokan, it's here. So I'm gonna give you a Shotokan variant, different target. Actually, you can use the same target, but I'm gonna show you a couple different ways to come at this. So one method, this time it's gonna be, oh, the guy's punching. So he's throwing a punch, which I do that. You see the double hand pass? I go, wabba. Now my hand is up here. He's gonna withdraw his hand, of course, which is nice because that, I'm just gonna follow that in. Now, I can go here. This is uh, mental framing. <laughs> uh-huh. There's nothing to it, right? Or, or, especially if I put a little bit of energy on this side, so as, as, he's, as that thing comes up here and he's starting to go back, I just do this a little bit. So I have a little more of this angle. This is stomach five, and I'm just gonna rake down stomach five. There are, in fact, three kata in the Nahanshi set. And these kata are important historically and important and incredibly useful as martial arts practice.
in Masterclass with Chris Thomas, there's actually coverage of all three of these katas, along with some really interesting variations. Masterclass with Chris Thomas is an extensive library of in-depth video instruction covering Ishimaru Karate, Rukyu Kempo, Tai Chi, Okinawan weapons, and so much more. It's a great value at $399 per year, but as a viewer of the Pressure Point Dojo, you can subscribe for only $119 per year. That's an amazing 60% discount. Just use the promo code DOJO when you subscribe. That's D-O-J-O -O in all capital letters. Oh yeah, and this is the part where I remind you that there's going to be a little delay between the time when you complete making your subscription and I'm able to activate your account, but it's worth the wait. You have this kata and then the movements have meanings and I'm showing you the meanings. And trust me, if, if all you do is take this content that I've shown you, learn the kata, learn these applications, you'll have a really deep insight into your martial practice. But I also want you to know that there's more going on than what I'm showing you today. Never take the things that I'm showing you as the end, but only as the beginning. This is the first place to start, but by no means the last place. Let's go back into the master class. So now we're going to look at this piece of the kata here. The hands are coming to the hips, and then you strike out to the side. It's not really to the side, so you need to understand that. What looks to the side is because my body turns. So as my body turns, my arms appear to be to the side, but if I were to turn my body square, you see that relative to my body, my hands are actually in that place that we described, where you never let your arms get over here. So this is the movement we're working on, found twice in the Katanaihanchi. You can be going, doing it in either direction, here. I should mention something. Um, when you're practicing this move, a, a very helpful thing to do is this. Uh, to go one, two, three. This is to help you get the timing. One, two, three. Later on, that just flows naturally. But at first, when you're first trying to get it, that's a good training methodology. Pressure point, lung eight. Very popular point in my world. Located here. So you start like you're feeling a pulse, and then you're going to, it's a, what we call a rub point, so it goes in the direction of the, of the wrist. So I would grab here, and then I would go like that, okay? But in this case, I want to do it this way, with the, a rubbing motion of my wrist. So this might be, like, a guy grabs me and throws a punch at my head. I go, I don't want to, you're hitting me, right? So then what's he going to do? Oh, you blocked, therefore I will stop. No, he's going to try to hit me again. Okay. So what I did was I took my arm and I, it has two motions. One is a motion like you're playing a violin this way. And the other is a motion like you're twisting this way. And they both accomplish more or less the same thing. And then once, once my arm is there, I pull to my hip very strongly. Why do you punch from your hip? Because that's where your hand is. The punch comes in. Notice that I bring the outside arm over, never under. So if you have a habit of bringing a hand under or between, like if somebody grabs you with two hands, if you have a ha habit of bringing your hands up underneath, don't do it. A lot of times you'll see people teach a wonderful technique where you press in the sternal notch and push away. Great technique. Do not bring your hands un up underneath to do it, and I'll show you why. So if I go like this, what happens? I get him. Where great, but look. I'm not really in control. But if I go this way and do it, see? That's better. I'm still controlling his arms while I'm doing the technique. So don't bring your hands up in between their arms ever. And if there's an arm grab and a punch coming at your head, the arm comes always over from the outside, never under from the inside. So train that until that's, you don't even think about it. I stop it here. He's going back to do it again. That's where I pull this this way. You see the two motions. One is this motion, like I'm playing a violin. The other is a twisting motion. I do them together. I bring this to my hip. That's why my hand is at my hip. Now, I would like to do a little more than that because I want to really mess with him because I'm that kind of a guy. So 
if he goes to throw a punch, he goes back to throw that punch, what tends to happen is, look, there's large intestine 10. Oh, look what happens. What if I do them together? I might not get both of them to work, but that's what I want to do. <coughs> do. If I do this movement, so my object is to bring my hands towards my hips this way. Right? I bring my hands over here. There's his head. His head's right there now. If I do this, I hit him in the head. If I do this, I hit him in the head. Okay. Yeah, so what I did in that particular case was I tapped him in triple warmer 17 first. That was this hand, and it was being chased by this hand, which hit him on, large, on gallbladder 20. So I went TW17, gallbladder 20. That's the diurnal cycle. I come, I'm hitting, dropping, brings his head into position. His head is really close to me. So if I swing this arm outward, it will hit his head like this. As soon as that head turns, I chase it with the other fist. So it, it look, it's one movement, but it has two beats. The, the one hand starts and the other follows. See it? So it's got... It has this kind of a feeling, right? See? Now, this hand comes over to here. Why? This is, we call this through energy. And so this, this technique is going to help you with a key, a key concept in application. You can see I'm doing this move at the end of the kata, <laughs> right? But it wasn't out here. It was right here. So the, the application is in the middle, not at the end. So what we, we tend to do is we tend to look at the end. We go, oh, what's up here? No, no, no. What did this go through? Yeah. What's, what's over here? No, no, no. What did these go through? That's the secret. All right, so we come in. Um, I try to get this rocking movement, and I hit large intestine 10. And if I don't get the rocking movement, I don't care. If I miss large intestine 10, I don't care. Because if all I did was grab and pull, I still get his head right there. So the great thing about the point work is that the point work makes it easy. But if the point doesn't work, the body mechanics make it easy. He go punch. I go, ah! He goes to punch me again. I go, I don't think so. There's his head. One, two. And it's a kind of beat to it. OK? Here's the key. Watch where the body movement is. See how the hand is starting and then the body? The hand starts and then the body. Please know that even though I've given you a wealth of information here today, it only scratches the surface. You know what? I hope you'll join me again for the next episode of Pressure Point Dojo here on Channel Fight so we can scratch that surface a little more. And until then, I'm Chris Thomas. Thanks for watching. Now go train. <laughs>